Father, and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Mother, brothers, and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us now call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who through your only begotten Son have made us a new creation for yourself, grant, we pray, that by your grace we may be found in the likeness of him in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading, a reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, we have this confidence in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in regard to whatever we ask, we know what we have asked him is ours. If anyone sees his brother sinning, if the sin is not deadly, he should pray to God and he will give him life. This is only for those whose sin is not deadly. There is such a thing as deadly sin, about which I do not say that you should pray. All wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin that is not deadly. We know that anyone begotten by God does not sin, but the one begotten by God he protects, and the evil one cannot touch him. We know that we belong to God, and the whole world is under the power of the evil one. We know that the Son of God has come and has given us discernment to know the one who is true. And we are in the one who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Children, be on your God against idols. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord, the Lord takes, takes delight, delight in his people. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Sing, the Lord. the Lord takes delight in his people. Let them praise his name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with tremble and harp. For the Lord loves his people, and he adores, adorns the lowly with victory. The Lord, the Lord takes, takes delight, delight in his people. people. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful. Alleluia. The Lord, the Lord takes, takes delight, delight in his people. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Alleluia. The people who sit in the darkness have seen a great light. On the dwelling in a land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. Alleluia, alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. Jesus and his disciples went into the region of Judea, where he spent some time with them baptizing. John was also baptizing in Anon near Salim, because there was an abundance of water there. And people came to be baptized, for John had not yet been in prison. Now a dispute arose between the disciples of John and a Jew about ceremonial washings. So they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, the one who was with you across the Jordan to whom you testified, here he is baptizing and everyone is coming to him. John answered, him, John answered and said, no one can receive anything except what has been given from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said, that I am not the Christ, but that I was sent before him. The one who, was, who, ha, who has the bride is the bridegroom. The best man who stands and listens to him 
rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. So this joy of mine has been made complete. He must increase, I must decrease. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Merry Christmas. Uh, tomorrow, Sunday, is the last day of Christmas season. So <clears throat> that's the last day we can greet this other Merry Christmas because after that is already Happy Easter and Happy Valentine's and Happy Thanksgiving. So uh, Merry Christmas, everyone. The postmodern society is <clears throat> described as something that is uh, very obsessed with image. Image is everything. And so uh, a postmodern society creates that image that kind of almost one defines himself. And this is reinforced especially with uh, social media, like, you know, uh, people creating a sense of security by um, what they have, for example, the clothes they wear, uh, the, the gadgets they have, uh, the cars they drive, uh, that image that they want to create because it gives them some sense of security or some, some sense of purpose or sense of identity. And um, sociologists and philosophers say that's exactly the characteristic of a postmodern society. Uh, pe people are so obsessed with creating uh, a false uh, image of who they are and who they want to be. The Gospel today uh, talks about the opposite. Not about creating a false image of who we are, trying to impress others, for example, with what we have, what, you know, what we possess, uh, what we have achieved, but rather with humility. And th the last line of the Gospel today is... Um, is very critical. He must increase, I must decrease. Many people thought Saint John the Baptist was the one they were waiting for. And in fact, many, many people followed him. He had the opportunity to actually deceive them because the image that the people perceived from him was that he was the one, the promised one, the Savior, the Messiah. That was the image. He could have actually said, well, yes, yes, actually, yes, I am. Thank you very much. But he didn't. He didn't. He was aware of who he was. He was aware of what his role was. The Gospel today, he says, no, I'm not the groom. I'm just the best man. He must increase. I must decrease. The humility of John the Baptist. You know, when we talk about humility, um, humility, as, as we know, comes from the Latin word humus, which is soil or ground. Ground is like something that you just step on. It's so low. Ground. And yet we also know that ground is very important. Like for a tree to grow and bear fruit, or for flowers to grow and have this, like, you know, the beautiful poinsettia we have, we probably would have them there until Valentine's Day because it looks beautiful. But all those trees and flowers and fruits would bloom because they are rooted. They are grounded. They're able to produce much because they are grounded. Humility might sound like too old-fashioned, but actually it is very essential. And very essential in the ministry of St. John the Baptist and very essential also for us to be grounded in our relationship with God. If we want to bear fruits, if we want to bear flowers in our lives, we have to be grounded. We have to be rooted in our lives. Not very assuming, not very presumptuous, but really rooted in our relationship with Christ. And this is, I think, a very important reading uh, today because we are beginning the year. We are just a few days into the new calendar year and this is exactly what we want, you know, when we talk about our New Year's resolution and they say the lifespan normally of New Year's resolution is two weeks. Uh, 
we are now on the second week uh, of uh, the new year, and I hope our New Year's resolution is still very much alive. Um, if ever we have, or if ever we haven't, let this be part or let this be the core of our New Year's resolution to be grounded, to be rooted in Christ. And as we ground our lives, we root our lives in Christ, we know that we will be capable of bearing fruits. We will be capable of bearing beautiful flowers, not for us, but for others. In the same way that John the Baptist did, his life was not about himself. His life was about giving witness to others. His life was about serving others. The same way that Christ lived his life. At Christmas, we said, there's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He could have actually just floated around, you know, uh, desiring to be worshipped and praised. But no, he said he came to serve, not to be served. That is humility. And that's exactly what the gospel today is telling us. So again, in our Mass today, we pray for that. We pray for that gift. I said, um, let's incorporate this into our New Year's resolution. No, aside from uh, trying to grow taller, I've always prayed that every year, every New Year. Lord, please, even just like one, one centimeter or half of a centimeter taller every year. Uh, hopefully, when I turn 60, uh, I would be like seven. <laughs> But we hope that our New Year's resolution would really be centered not simply on something that is on the physical, you know, or um, things, something like we desire to achieve for ourselves and for our families. But today is something that's very important. A New Year's resolution that centers our life in Christ, to be rooted, to be grounded in Christ. And so we pray, Lord, please, today as I begin this, this calendar year, let my life be a life of fruitfulness, a life that blooms. But I know that I can only do that if I am grounded, rooted in you. Remind me every day that without you, my life would be nothing. Without you, I would not be capable of bearing fruits, of bearing flowers, not for me, but the fruits that I bear, the fruits of kindness that I'll be able to share to others. Knowing that all we receive is given from heaven, let us now present our needs with confidence to God. And let the response be, Lord, hear our prayer. For God's holy church, may he bless her with continued growth in number and holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who exercise leadership or influence, may Christ guide them in their lives and their work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick, the destitute, and those experiencing loneliness and sadness in this season, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all of us gathered here, may God strengthen us against temptation and graciously hear our prayers for one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who are ill, physically, mentally, or spiritually, especially Loy Pestiano, Giselle Odivilas, Marie Tenay, and Dennis Donovan, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of us gathered here, may God strengthen us for all, I'm sorry, for all who have died in the light of faith, especially Hovida, Senelia, Juliet, Cezanne, Rafi, Hizan, Father Ali, Pizarus. May God soon welcome them into his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. And today we also pray in a very special way for Gisela Parra, for the deceased members of the Dolan and Furlong families, for Marie Fischetti, 
and for Filomena Piero from this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of us gather in this celebration, for ourselves, for those who ask for our prayers, those whom we promise to pray for, for all those prayer intentions and prayer requests that you post on our social media account, we keep praying for an end to the pandemic, and for all the intentions that we hold dear in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Almighty Father, you hear our prayers and know our needs. Please grant whatever we ask according to your will, through Christ, O Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are the Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us our bread of life. Let's be God forever. Blessed our Lord, God of all creation, for the goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of divine work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let us now pray that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the, for the praise, praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his own church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and have peace, graciously grant that through this offering may we do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ, O Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, a duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May call you therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the true fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ and be gathered into one with the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullest of charity together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we are married to be co-heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form of divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. And for everyone at home, we greet each other with the peace of Christ. Peace to everyone. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us recite our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. 
May your people, O Lord, whom you guide and sustain in many ways, experience both now and in the future the remedies which you bestow, that with the needed solace of things that pass away, they may strive with ever deepened trust for things eternal. Through Christ, O Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will